arrays. What is an array? Array is a collection of homogeneous or similar data elements. When we want to initialize many identifiers under the same data type, it is very difficult using comma operator. That is, if you want to initialize 100 integer identifiers, you can write it as int a1, comma, a2, comma, a3, comma, so on till a of 100. So it is very difficult to identify which identifier is used for what purpose. So in order to solve this problem, we can use the concept of arrays. So in a given program, we can initialize the identifiers with the same name called int followed by the identifier names. Once we initialize the identifiers with the comma operator, so we can also initialize them using the array notation. That is, we can use an array name followed by the size of the given elements. Similarly, we can initialize for all the different data types within the array. So let us see some of the characteristics of an array. An array represents a group of related data. An array has two distinct characteristics. An array is ordered. That is, an ordered array is grouped sequentially starting from elements of 0, element of 1 till n minus 1. That is, the array index starts from 0 and the last element index is n minus 1. Let's take an example. If you have 100 elements in the array, the starting elements index is 0 and the last element index is n minus 1. That is 99. The next distinct characteristic is an array is homogeneous. Every value within an array must share the same data type. In other words, an int array can only hold integer values, but not any other data type values. So how to create an array? Before we create an array, we need to decide the two properties. The first property is what is the data type of the element? which you are going to store. And the second property which you need to remember is what is the size of the array? So I'll repeat once again. The first property is element type. That is what is the data type of the element? Whether it is character, float, int, double, whatever the data type name. Next, array size represents the number of elements which your array should hold. The different types of arrays. Arrays are classified into three types. The first one is one dimensional array. The second one is two dimensional array. The third one is multi dimensional array. Now let us see one dimensional array. One dimensional array is a linear list consisting of related and similar data items. In memory, all the data items are stored in contiguous memory location. Contiguous memory location means, so if you know the location of the first element, the next element location you can easily understand by the data type size. So declaring a one dimensional array, you can declare a one dimensional array in this way. So in order to declare an ordinary variable, so what is the notation we use? int number. This is for ordinary number. Next, if I want to use for one dimensional array, to declare we need to use it as data type followed by array name and in the subscript you are going to write the size. So within the subscript whatever the size you specify according to the size the elements will be allocated to the array name. For example, if I take int number of 5, so it, cre it creates an array of 5 integer elements. Next, initializing. 
So what are the different operations which we can perform on one dimensional array? The operations which we can perform on one dimensional array are first one is initializing. So there are four options to initialize one dimensional array. The first option A is the basic initialization. If the values of all the data elements are known, the values must be specified within the braces, within the curly braces. Like example, int temp of 5 equal to, so within the curly braces you need to write in this way, 75 comma 79 comma 82 comma 70 comma 68 and close the curly brace followed by semicolon. So if you can see closely the memory layout, the first index, if I take it as 1000, imagine it is a basic compiler. So if it is taking 2 bytes of memory, if integer is holding 2 bytes of memory, the basic C compilers, if the base address is 1000, the immediate next element's address will be 102. So if you can see the memory slots, in temp of 0, the element is 75 and the base address is 1000. In temp of 1, the element is 79, the address is 1002. So if it is an, uh, the advanced compilers, it takes the integer as 4 bytes, which means if it is 1000, for the advanced compilers, it will take 1004. And similarly, the all elements will be stored in contiguous memory block. The second way of initialization, the option B, initializing without size. So we don't know what is the exact size of the elements which we are trying to store it in the array. So int temp of give the subscript but don't specify any size in it, which is equal to within the curly braces write it as 75, 79, 82, 70 and 68. These are some of the elements. The compiler allocates the memory for an array of pi elements. The array temp is initialized as shown below. So you can see over here, that is temp of 0, you have 75 and 1000. Temp of 1, you have 79 and 1002. Temp of 2, you have 88, 82, followed by the address, the base address is 1004. Temp of 3, you have 70 and 1006. Temp of 4, you have 68 and 1008. So this is how the memory allocation will be done. Next, option C, partial array initialization, which means you initialize an array with some size. Let's take int temp of 5 equal to, within the curly braces, we are writing 75 comma 79 comma 82. So here, the values whatever we have specified are 3, but the size of array is 5. So the values whatever we have not specified it, they will be allocated to the default values. That is the value of integer, the default value will become 0. So here, if you can see the notation, in temp of 0 we have 75, the base address is 1000. In temp of 1 we have 79, the base address is 1002. In temp of 2 we have 82, the base address is 1004. And in temp of 3, there is no element, so we are allocating, the compiler is allocating to 0. And the base address is 1006. In temp of 4, the element is 0 and the base uh, address is 1008. So this is how the allocation will be done in the partial array initialization. Next, uh, option D. So initializing to all zeros. So if the value of data elements are not known well in advance, then all the elements can be initialized to 0. For example, int temp of 5 equal to within the curly brace if I am writing 0, so which means in all the locations, the 5 locations will be allocated with zeros. So this is how we are going to write the different ways of initialization. Coming to the next operation of the one dimensional array, that is inputting the values. So how we can input the values? To fill the elements in an array, we need to read the elements from the keyboard. So this could be done using a loop. So in order to read the elements, we require one for loop. So if I want to read 
we need to read like for i equal to 0 i less than the number of elements let's take in this case 9 elements less than i is less than 9 semicolon followed by i plus plus so after writing this for loop statement write a scanf percentile d comma address of so whatever the array name so here the array name is codes of i so in every ith location that is in 0th location first location second location till 8th location that is if i say 9 elements n minus 1 so till 8th location all the elements whatever you are trying to write it will be stored in the scores of array the another way of operation on the array is accessing elements of an array that is in order to access the elements of the array we require an index index is used to access individual elements of an array so if i want to access third index i can write scores of 3 if i want to access the first index scores of 0 next one is printing or the output of the values so in order to print the output so in order to print the common way which we want, which we are going to use for printing is printf so here if i want to print the multiple elements which are there in the array so this can be easily done using a loop for i equal to 0 semicolon i less than n that is i less than 9 i plus plus here i am considering n value as 9 printf percentile d comma scores of i so here we need not to specify any address of sign address of sign is to be specified only in the scanf so if you are specifying address of sign here you are going to get all the addresses which we don't require we require the direct values whatever they are stored in the one dimensional array so this is how we are going to use one for loop for reading one for loop for printing the elements of one dimensional array the next one is how we can assign the values to an array how we can assign the values to an array so suppose if we have array temperature the readings of temperature for the year is represented in the below example so you can write the given temperatures like 75 79 82 70 68 next 65 58 63 67 61 so like this you can implement the multiple arrays and you can use the values whenever you want to extract from that particular index position so we can loop through the elements of an array by verifying the subscript to set all the elements of the array like we can take the temperatures of i and we can set the values 